Sean and I made a film about Bill and, and, and Bill and Peter's collection, and that had focused. It, it had a bit in it about the trilogy, obviously, but it had also focused on Comrades, which was his last film, because that's the one that the, the moving cinema devices are in, the things that you see in the collection. So I knew about, uh, and uh, of course I watched all these films, I knew about uh, Bill's childhood and also uh, we interviewed um, uh, Peter about that and, and we interviewed um, Bill's sister, Helen, who lives in Australia. She happened to be in Edinburgh um, and we caught her then. So, but Chaplin, I'd never read my autobiography until we started to make this, so I had not uh, really um, I suppose I had, I knew that it had been a poor childhood. I did not realise that just how bad it was, I think. And also just how um, incredibly uh, depressing, really. And his, um, the, the, the unreality for him at the end, in, in the final section that we, uh, that we use from the autobiography, that he wants to go back to America, which is where his real life is, where, where his work is. And I thought that was a great place to end because, of course, that's what did happen. Yeah. Well, the, well, the irony was in the end, they, during the McCarthy era, they stripped him of his citizenship so he couldn't get back. In, in, in at the end of the 52 visit, yeah. which we also saw, where, again, he sort of mobbed in, in London, um, that was when uh, the US didn't let him back in. The, the the jaunty tone of the 1952 newsreel guy, and here he is, and everyone's happy, and he's <laughs> delighted to be back in this place where the implication was he he was so happy, and in fact he was the absolute opposite of that. He was absolutely traumatized by the plinth. Mm. He had the most terrible mm. terrible time. He was starving. Right, this idea that you know, he was. Uh, uh, having a happy nostalgic yeah, experience yeah. when in fact he was having something much more like post-traumatic stress. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. that that was, that was kind of a point worth making. Yeah. And that, that footage of his London return, the two London returns, is extraordinary. They, the, is it the 20s or 30s footage when he's almost sort of engulfed in the crowd? That's incredible. That's, yeah, the, yeah. the huge crowd is 21. Yeah. The shot of him getting off the train, looking a bit worried, is 31. Yeah. And then the 52 was the... Uh, Mm, one we so see most of yeah, with yeah. the um, with the voiceover. Yeah, yeah. He had the benefit when he was an old man of not looking like Charlie Chaplin. Yes. Mm -hmm. So at a later stage, he could wander around the streets yes. in Canton and not be recognised mm. until yes. suddenly somebody said, mm -hmm. "Yeah," and then the crowds would start gathering. Yeah. But I think he must have been very moved every time he went. Mm, I think so, yeah. And I suppose, in a way, the same thing has happened to Bill, because all the scenes of his childhood have now been demolished. Mm. So though he filmed my childhood, his autobiographical film, in the place where it actually, where he'd actually grown up, it's all gone now. Yeah, New Craig Hall is quite different now. Uh, New Craig Hall has now got its own elephant and castle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Horror. <laughs> Well, the, the train actually stopped at New Craig Hall, man. Never, it never used to. You used to have to go to Musselburgh and walk across the field. Um, but yeah, it's definitely um, yeah. being gentrified. And it, it was not down very soon after Bill made My Childhood, wasn't it, Peter? Yeah. You know, almost, almost immediately. So it's, he caught the very end of it, you know, mm. in the film. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And trying to find the places, of course, that Bill had felt that was the primary um, how tough was there's, that? There's so almost the second... nothing left, my yeah. God. Yeah. It's, um... you know, you'd think it had been bombed. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, but uh, Lambeth Walk is particularly... Yeah. Uh, unless you knew that this... Of, of course, it's still called Lambeth Walk, but unless you knew, it's just mm. concrete everywhere. So, um, and the infirmary, of course, and the... That was the um, hardest one to find. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, it's so still got the gateposts. All that's left of the infirmary is just the very... Um, distinctive uh, rectangular doorway um, but uh, yeah just a lot of googling basically and uh, wandering around and using old maps and, yes um, yeah yeah but um, the irony is that um, we're trying to reflect um, for those of you who've not read my autobiography by uh, Chaplin he goes back to Panel Terrace every time he comes back to London so that was 1921 
31, 52, and possibly later still. Um, yeah, then the footage of him in the Charlie Chaplin pub is 72. Um, so he's obviously referring to different, um, different periods in his life. The longest description is the 1921 visit when he goes back. That was his first visit after becoming a movie star. Um, and then we found over the period, I suppose this, this is just the way of, of cities and of London in particular, but um, even some of these places, um, even now, are no longer there over the last three years when we've been making this film. Um, most recently, I think last week, I just found out that the Elephant and Castle shopping centre is being demolished, which will include the Charlie Chaplin pub, which was, that was the mid-60s. Um, so even then, you know, you see the newspaper clipping, you know, mm. Chaplin saying that he doesn't recognise the Elephant and Castle. Even then, it was unrecognisable. And uh, it's a bit of a blot on the landscape, to be honest. I mean, it's quite like the elephant. But, um, it's quite a mournful picture of him at the bar there. Yeah, yeah he's, he's not very happy, is he? <laughs> no, no. So, yeah, it's weird. So that's no longer there. So the film's kind of out of date already, which sort of, in a way, is kind of fitting. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only footage we have of Bill himself is this interview uh, where he is wearing the Chaplin mask for part of it and then he takes the Chaplin mask off and they ask him some, uh, some basic questions about uh, his, his life and, and, and so on. So, so that's what we had. So, but the good thing about that was that it, it sort of gives you Bill and the Chaplin mask right together so then so then that's what that whole mask thing is all about and then we even found a shot of fred in his old shop with the mask <laughs> the mask we found a shot of the and of course we filmed the actual set, set of masks in fact there's more than one um, so it was possible to play around with this uh, identity between bill and and, and chaplin and and hope that that would uh, give some kind of structural underpinning. And mm. then we had the, the, the time thing and, and the buses and the London footage to sort of take us through. And then we had the archive stuff as well. And there's a question really about how to um, integrate that. Mm. Uh, I think the thing in, in the way, the thing I was most happy to find was the Chaplin Carnival which is actually right at the centre of the film, yeah, among the collection. And, it, and of course the collection, each image of Chaplin, sort of commodifies Chaplin and makes him into this, you know, the, the, uh, uh, takes him away from the human. <laughs> and, and that result of his enormous fame, which is why there is all this memorabilia in the first place, seemed to be um, captured quite well by the mm. Italian carnival. Yes, where is that carnival? I think it's Nice. Actually. It's okay. Nice. Oh, is it Nice? Yeah. Are you sure? I thought it was Italian. No, it's, it's either Nice or Marseille in 1932, oh. okay. 33. Yeah. Um, so we had to put that in. We saw this huge, mm. huge Charlie coming down the street <laughs> with his camera. Um, but the um, another thing that factored into the, the layering of the time, because you know Chaplin's looking back on several visits we're looking back at Bill and Peter's footage. Um, so it, it became um, multi-layered was the watchword. Um, but also we didn't have, we only had um, 100 feet of eight millimeter footage. So when it became, I had become quite interested in references to cinema and pre-cinema in the trilogy. And, um, and I didn't realize there were these direct references to Chaplin. Um, so we thought rather than just showing 287 Kennington Road again, we could just show stills from my childhood where Jamie's dad stops him on the street, um, and that was quite nice. And so it's kind of made made sense to use the shots from my way home for the workhouse as well, because this was the one location that Bill and Peter didn't film, despite the fact that it's right next door to the infirmary. Um, the entrances were on different streets, so um, so that was just another way of adding to that layering of showing how you know Chaplin's influence seeping into the trilogy. What happened to Chaplin's brother? Do you know? He was a, mu a minor star, yeah. wasn't he? He did quite well. Yes, especially in this country. He starred in several comedies. I think he and then became, in effect, Chaplin's manager. Didn't he appear in the limelight as well, or some of Chaplin's yeah, sound? Well, a lot of the Chaplin's yeah. sound appeared. <laughs> so I, th I, think he did, I think he had a pretty successful <coughs> career. I think he predeceased Charlie. Oh, yeah. some, some years. And there's another brother, isn't there? A half-brother. 
wheel of drive. Yes. Um, and then I always had a theory, which I have now actually seen in a book, that um, Chaplin muddled up his parents. <laughs> <laughs> and that Charlie Chaplin Sr. is actually Sidney's father. Um, and that Chaplin did have a Jewish father. Mm. Because Chaplin was all, often, by rather aggressive journalists, approached on whether he was a Jew or not. Really? Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. And he gave the most wonderful answer, which I remember quoting to Fred one day, who was also Jewish. He said, I do not have that privilege. Um. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful way? Excellent. Yes, yes. There's also these, these well, things about whether Chaplin was a gypsy as well, isn't there? Yeah. You know, which did turn up in a, in a Peaky Blinders episode. Um, but, but this is so it's interesting that those, these different kind of ideas about yeah. who he is come in. Yeah. So that's but I was, another kind of multi layer. Well, I was quite careful to. I mean, if you notice, um, yeah, when the first time, the <coughs> second time, you see the, the hands flipping through the the autobiography, the, one of the pictures is, is Hitler, or rather a still from the great dictator, right? And then um, Fred, Fred obviously uh, fled Czechoslovakia with his family, which is why he's in the rag trade, which is why he has a piece of chalk, which is why he was able to write three and Charlie Chapman lived here, which is why Bill and Peter were able to film it. So <laughs> that's, that's the kind of thing that it sort of turns on. So I thought that that was... Uh, but we only discovered that when you were already making the that's film. That's right. Yeah. I just happened to be talking with Fred one day and talked about your making the film. And Charlie Chapman lived here and he said, I wrote those words up on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Which is the thing he could not have done so had Hitler not invaded Czechoslovakia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. think it's worth commenting on the um, effect of the locations on Chaplin's films. There's no doubt in my mind that Metro Street with the Liquor Factory is an, an easy street. You've got mm. almost exactly the same setup. Yeah. And when we were in the garret in Pan Am Terrace, we were in the garret in the kid. Yeah. It's designed yes. in exactly the same mm. country. Yeah. That's why I put that there. And there's also the, this return, you know, like um, in the Attenborough film biography of Charlie Chaplin, Geraldine mm. Chaplin, Chaplin's daughter plays his mother, mm. isn't it? She's a sort of yeah. majority. Yeah. Yeah, of course, you wouldn't be allowed anywhere near a demolition site these days. <laughs> Security <laughs> people wouldn't, you know. I know. My assistant, when she, we, 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 Faith, who helped do some of the um, masking for the uh, for the credit sequence. So she was looking at the the primary sequence, which is of the demolition, and the bulldozer comes into view with the guy driving it, and she says, "He's not even wearing a hat." <laughs> <laughs> That's the view of twenty somethings. <laughs> Level of health and safety. Those you know. carefree days before health and safety culture. So um, thanks very much for Sean and Louise for showing us the film, which was wonderful. So thank you. Very much.